Pluto's really puny, right? Yes. But so is Mercury. Well, Pluto's uh, a lot punier. A lot yeah. punier. One twentieth so the mass of Mercury. Of uh, Mercury. That's, that's like less than the mass of the moon. Oh, touchdown right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Neil deGrasse Tyson's new PBS Nova documentary, The Pluto Files. Dr. Tyson is the guy who killed Pluto. Uh, that is, it was Dr. Tyson and his team at the Hayden Planetarium in New York City who decided 10 years ago to not call Pluto a planet anymore and instead classify it as part of a distant asteroid belt. So instead of remembering the planets by memorizing my very excellent mother just served us nine pizzas, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, you instead have to memorize my very excellent mother just served us nachos. No more pizza, no more Pluto. For being the first astrophysicist to reclassify Pluto, Dr. Tyson got hate mail from third graders who wanted to know what he had done with the planet that they loved and who no one admits was the inspiration for the name of Mickey's dog. Turns out Americans are weirdly intensely in love with Pluto. It's sort of America's planet. It was the only planet discovered by an American. That was Clyde Tombaugh 80 years ago. Mr. Tombaugh made his own telescopes on the family farm. In the Pluto files, Dr. Tyson goes to a barber shop in Mr. Tombaugh's hometown, Streeter, Illinois, and he sees what the guy who discovered Pluto means to that town today. Check this out. Oh, we're very proud of him. Yeah. Very proud of him, what he did. And so, and you learned about him in high school? Oh, no, no, elementary school. Third grade, maybe? Because that's when most people first learn about the planets, right? And then, so his name comes up, yeah. and you learn he's a local guy. Yeah. And Streeter boy makes good, so to speak. And back in third grade, though, wow, that's astounding from Streeter. So you feel about pride. Little. You feel some pride. Oh, you bet. Always did. Always had something to point to as far as... Look at there, that guy, he discovered Pluto, he's smart in that area. Walt Disney met, named a dog after him. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's true. So how do you feel about Pluto, Dr. Tyson? <laughs> Joining us now is the man who dared to move Pluto and then get a straight razor shave in Streeter, Illinois, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you so much for being well, thank here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, all right. I want to start with the basics. Mm -hmm. What's a planet? <laughs> <laughs> is there an agreed upon definition for what a planet is? At this moment, there's a voted upon definition that doesn't have full agreement by the entire community, but a planet is big enough to be round okay. and strong enough, if you will, to have completely, almost completely cleared its orbit of other debris that could change its mass over time. So in other words, the big eight. Well, there's the big four, yeah. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and then there's like a littler four, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and then there was Pluto, which was puny compared with these eight. Right. Puny. All right? So Pluto is mixed with a whole group of other icy bodies in the outer solar system, the Kuiper belt of comets. Comets, not Comets, not right. Okay. Ky Ky Kuiper belt of icy bodies. Okay. Okay? It hasn't cleared that orbit. There's much more mass of other stuff out there than Pluto itself. In all the other eight, they basically cleared their orbit. So definition of planet, have you cleared your orbit? If it's a yes, you put a check there. Are you big enough to be round? You got eight planets. Big enough to be round. Yeah, if you're little, then if you're rocky, the rocks define what shape you are. So okay. you could be craggy, you could look like an Idaho potato, but above a certain size, it's a beautiful fact of physics that above a certain size, the gravity forces your physical dimensions to take the shape of a sphere. Also true with people. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, all right, but the, the one. You go around asking people if they're planets or not. That would be. <laughs> no, I don't at all. But the thing about the thing about Pluto that is fascinating is that people do get upset about it. Americans primarily, yeah, they get intense, Im intensely emotional. But I didn't know before watching your documentary that Pluto was was discovered by an American, and so that doesn't explain why I had this emotional feeling. Exactly. About it. So about in my my sort of casual statistics about. 10% of Americans who felt strongly about Pluto knew that an American had discovered it. Mm -hmm. So the source had to be some other, had to be some other force acting <laughs> on these emotions. Do you know what it is? Well, I, not initially. I mean, I had to, I scratched my head and I looked around, I sniffed around and I said, wait a minute. There's this dog we all know, yeah. Mickey's dog, that has the same tenure in the hearts and minds of Americans. Why? Because it was first sketched the same year, coincidentally, that Pluto, the cosmic object, was discovered. Wow. 80, so 
80 years, they've been in the hearts and minds of Americans. And when do you first learn about the planets? First, second, third grade. When are you watching cartoons? First, second, third grade. There it is. And I think that link stays with us, even if only subliminally, subliminally throughout our entire lives. I also think that Pluto's an underdog. Not related to the dog, not the dog part of that, but I think we think like, oh, it's the puny guy. Like, we're Americans, we like the underdog. Exactly. And so and that's okay, too. Uh, you know, if there's, a, if there's someone who's not favored to win a contest and then they win, you cheer them even harder and yeah. you're, you're rooting for them. Pluto was certainly the underdog, the puniest of the planets. But now in its new zone, it's one of the largest of the icy bodies. I think of it as the king of the comets. I, th I think it's happier there, actually. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's totally the, happier that there. That was the exact same construction used to make the nerd guy cool in 16 Candles. He got to be the king of the nerds and Instead of the lowest, anyway. Um, when you met with the family of the man who discovered Pluto, were they mad at you? I was worried about them. This yeah. is the whole family. Clyde Tombaugh's widow, who's like 97 or eight years, he's almost 100, and his sons and nieces and nephews, they all gathered on his home in, in New Mexico to greet me as I came. And I was kind of worried, because yeah. as a New Yorker, I'm ready for say, hey, what did you do with our plan? I was, I, was ready, I was ready for some like confrontational encounters. Right. But they were so nice. They were so nice. Again, as a New Yorker, I was like, this is suspiciously nice. They got something cooking in the back. <laughs> no, but they were genuinely nice. And they were, I think they appreciated that there was this attention given to Clyde Tama. Even, forget Pluto. The fact is, I, I came to learn of him, and to learn about him to be, as, as an American hero. He was a farm boy from Streeter, Illinois. You see some farm, yeah. some guys in the barber shop. He's a, Main Street has a mural of him down Main Street. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 window, a stained glass window in a church in New Mexico that has his life on it. And he came out, out, of, out of a farm, and he was looking up while everyone said, you know, till the, till the soils. He built his own telescopes. Yeah. He had a, a relationship with the universe that ended up becoming realized as a professional astronomer. That's an American story, and not enough people know it. And that makes, I bet, them feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do it like, just to make them nice with me. I mean, no, they were actually true. genuinely yeah. nice, nice people. That's right. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, your time, and thank you for making this cool documentary about a cool thing. I'm happy to. Yeah, thanks for, for thinking about it. Thanks, Steve. forward. Thanks. Take care. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson um, is the director of the Hayden Planetarium. He's an astrophysicist. I want you to know that the Pluto Files was inspired by Dr. Tyson's book of the same title.